Hello, everyone. Um, this is Jonathan Stewart. Um, and hi, I'm Emma Moss. And we are your AI systems leads. Um, we're here today to talk about Magic School. We're excited. Um, what we'll be covering today, um, over two actual bite-sized PDs, is we'll first talk about what AI is, how does it work, our resources in CSD, what is Magic School AI, and how do you log in with CSD Docs. If you follow with my um, um, session, you'll talk about Magic School AI for teacher planning, and there's some of the things we cover there. And if you're coming with mine, you'll look through what you can use it for in the classroom, which covers what Magic Student is, how to create a Magic Student room, customizing those tools, and then actually sharing your room out with your students. Um, this, is, this is our MTSS framework. As you know, this is new this year, um, and we're excited for it. And we fit in with high quality teaching and learning and technology integration and that's because we want to do best practices for using AI in your classroom and with your students. So let's jump in first and talk a little bit about what AI is. This is our common definition. It's a branch of computer science aimed at creating machines that mimic human intelligence. For us, this is a broad category. We also have what are called chatbots. So those are computer programs designed to simulate conversation with human users. Um, that's with text-based interfaces. Sometimes we're starting to see those evolve, but chatbots utilize artificial intelligence. And so when you're working with Magic School, you'll be using a chatbot that uses artificial intelligence. We also have some different types of AI. So we have a reactive AI, which is just responding to data. We have predictive AIs, which analyze data in terms of making predictions. And then we have generative AI, which creates new content and generates ideas and different data patterns and all those things that are really exciting. When you talk about AI today, you're probably talking about generative AI and that's what Magic School uses. So how does AI work? AI learns from data by noticing patterns. Um, we call that training. So these models have been trained on lots and lots of data and then using that data, they make decisions. So they use that training to improve over time. Um, Magic School is just using lots of training and if you're, this seems similar, this is how humans work too. And so. When you're working with an AI, just know that it's using data to make decisions to generate new content. In Canyons, we also have some resources to support you. So if you're wanting to learn more about AI or connect, um, Jonathan and I and the team that we work with has a website. It's canyonsdistrict.org slash AI, super easy. And we also have what we call the VIEW. So it is our guidebook and framework, and it has supporting resources for all of our stakeholders, whether you're a teacher or a student or an administrator and has different links there that you can explore to help you learn more about AI. Now, that was generally about AI. We're gonna talk about the specific tool that we're gonna to talk about today. What is Magic School AI? In a word, awesome. Magic School is a set of 60 easy to use tools. It helps with lesson planning, differentiation, communication. It helps support your students. It's something you can use with students. It's something that helps you with planning as a teacher. Obviously, we have sessions on each of those. Um, what it allows you to do is utilize AI and use your AI skills in an environment designed for teachers, designed for education, and designed for the safety of students in mind. And so that's the part that's really cool. Let's get the logistics over with. How do I get there? Well, the good news is, is that the Magic School has a free version and a paid version. Um, when I go through my video in particular, you'll see me talk about the paid features versus the free features. But the free, free, free version is pretty robust, easy to use. You can get started right away. So what you'll do, we have screenshots here, is you'll just type in magicschool.ai. You could do a Google search, that would come up too. You'll have, you'll have a whole big home page. You'll notice up in the corner, it will say log in or sign up for free. Now, if you have not signed up before, you'll obviously hit sign up for free. You go to log in if you already have an account. It'll bring you to this sign in page and it's gonna ask you, are you an educator or a student? Pretty sure you're an educator. So go ahead and hit the backpack right there. And then it will prompt you, do you wanna sign in with email? or do you wanna sign in with one of the following ways? What we recommend, what we highly, highly recommend is that you sign in with Google. When you click on that, it will take you to your CSD docs. Uh, ask if you wanna log in, log in with CSD docs and use that as your account. And then from there, you're all set to go. Now. So next steps. 
Um, if you are watching the rest of this, you're either watching Jonathan's, which is going to go over magic school for teacher use in more detail, or you'll be watching mine, which is going to go over magic student and how you can use this amazing tool. Or what did you say? Awesome. Awesome, awesome tool awesome. with your students. So thanks for watching and we'll connect with you soon. And thanks for watching. So far, you have seen our intro from Jonathan and I. Um, Jonathan is going to walk you through magic school. So if you haven't had a chance, go watch his video. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through Magic Student. So I'm really excited to show you Magic Student and what it can do for you in your classroom. So moving into our learning intentions and success criteria. Today you are learning about how to use Magic School AI with students so that you can support personalized student learning with AI in your classroom. You're also learning about how to define AI and how it works, defining Magic School, logging into Magic School with AI with CSD Docs, and creating and customizing a student room. So if you realize, we've already done three of those. We've defined AI together, we looked at how it uses training, we defined Magic School, it has lots of these tools, and we logged in with that process, the one, two, three, clicking login, and then educator, and then logging in with Google so that you could log in with your CSD Docs. So now we get to do the create and customize a student room. And we're gonna do that together. You may have noticed that I am out of present mode, and part of the reason that is, is so that I can walk you through um, what I'm gonna show you and switch between tabs. So I have another tab up here for Magic School. So we're gonna look at how to view teacher tools versus student tools, how to get started with a room for students, select certain tools, customize tools, share the link, and then look at the student perspective. It seems like a lot in 20 minutes, but there are really quick things that I think these tips and tricks will help you as you start to navigate using Magic School um, and a specifically Magic Student with your students. So let's go ahead and look at viewing the teacher tools versus student tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Okay, so this is my dashboard. So here I have Magic School. Over here I have Magic Student. Um, if I click it, it'll switch and you'll notice that the background changes. So Magic School, like this creamy color, Magic Student is that light purple. And there's some differences between these tools. For example, in Magic Student, you'll see things like writing feedback. Okay, so you can click into that, view the tool, what it looks like. You'll also see step-by-step, -step, tutor me with AI, rewrite it, there's a quiz me. Um, there's a couple of things here too, like an AI literacy bot. These things are here to help our students. And this is because we have some different tools. So over in Magic School, which is for our teachers, we have things like an IEP generator. Those are things that our students won't need. So again, this is the student side, I mean the teacher side, and this is the student side, this Magic Student. So that's viewing the teacher tools versus students tools. Let's go ahead and talk about how to get started with a room for students and what to do. So we're gonna head back over to Magic School. And to get started, we're gonna come down to this Launch to Students button. Okay, so I'm gonna click on it. That's gonna bring me into my student rooms dashboard. So here you can see some various student rooms that I have. Um, it shows me which ones are active, paused, locked. I have a locked room that's there. Um, all of those different types of rooms. So this is how you do it. Easy, click one button, launch to students. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is go up to this purple button and click launch new room. Okay, so once you've gotten to this stage, you can name your student room. I'm gonna name this one bite-sized PD for magic school AI. I'm gonna put this at a kindergarten level and then the max students is 250. All right, so we've looked at the viewing teacher tools, how to get started with a room. Now we're actually gonna go in and select those tools. So we're gonna head back over to our Magic School tab. We put those details in and we're gonna click the next button. And this is the point where you can select tools for your students. So how you're gonna do that is you're gonna come down and we're, anytime you hover, it'll say add. So we could add like an image generator, an AI literacy bot. We could add some writing feedback. Song generator is always fun. Um, you can also search for tools. So like I know there's a joke creator, so I'm gonna look for joke, and already it's showing me joke creator um, there that I can add. Also has book suggestions, which is a fun one. So those are the ones I'm gonna add into my room. So I've selected those tools. Super easy, right? You can also deselect all, or if there's a tool you don't want, you can hover over it and remove it. Maybe I don't want book suggestions after all but I do, so I'm gonna put it back in, just like that. Couple of clicks, super easy. Okay, let's look at customizing these tools now. 
So to customize, we're just gonna click the next button. And this is the customized area. So when you hover over these tools, you'll notice that instead of saying add now, they say customized. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on writing feedback. And I'm gonna put in, it's for kindergarten, which probably would be, we probably want writing feedback for an upper grade. So you can change that right inside the room. You could say this assignment has you write a sentence and check for spelling errors. Okay, we're gonna make this really simple. Um, what kind of feedback do you want? I want feedback on spelling. Um, inspect your writing, and then I can insert the writing there. Um, these are things I can customize. You'll also notice up here that you can save it as a template. So if it's something you're using often and frequently, you could click Save as Template, and I could name this Writing Feedback Spelling click save and then you'll notice here it'll save all of those options for you okay this is a preview of what your students will see and then you can actually when you click next so I just click next you can actually see what your students see so this is going to give them if you want to say I want feedback on spelling I want to write a sentence okay so obviously I spelled things wrong but I'm asking for feedback on spelling I'm just going to click generate and there you go. This is what I would show your students. Okay. So that's you can test out your customization, see what happens. If you want to fix something, you can go hit the back button, go back and fix it and adjust. Okay, so I've customized this one. I'm going to leave the rest the same. And now I'm going to go ahead and launch the room. Okay, so like I mentioned, we finished customizing. Now we're going to look at sharing the link. So we're going to come down here. I launched my room and it's going to pop up with this auto menu. Um, it has a couple of options for you. You can click a join URL. So there's the URL I could use. You can copy that to use in a second. You can also get an insert for Google Classroom or you can get join codes, so the QR code, and they would students would go to this link, they'd plug in the code, um, just like they would in Nearpod or something else, and they could log right in that way. Okay. So that's how you share the link. I'm gonna again go copy that link over here. Once you create a room, it'll take you to that room dashboard panel um, where you can come back into the joining info. You can see what tools you have in there. Um, you can open a moderation panel if something puts if someone puts something inappropriate. You can actually add co-teachers by sharing a link. Um, and there'll be a couple of other actions. If you want to edit the room, you can go right back in. There's our room details. You can change or update those things. Um, and it'll actually give you the same so that'll be the same link. See, there's our same. So um, really easy things that you can do. So our last thing on the list here is to look at the student perspective. So you'll notice that I copied that link. I'm gonna open a new tab. And I'm gonna put that link in. I'm gonna add my name, click join room. And it's gonna pop up with this, with this menu. When your students log in, they're gonna have a use Magic School responsibly. These guidelines, if I was doing this in a classroom, I would teach my students about them. I would screenshot this um, and talk through it before they ever get on the tool and make sure that you're talking through them about how your teacher can see them. Math answers you want to calculate yourself. Sometimes they're not reliable. It's telling you some training issues here because AI is trained on data. Um, it takes practice to interact. Try again if the first try isn't what you want. Um, and making sure that you're looking to protect your privacy. So don't share any personal details like names or addresses. Um, here with Magic School, they do a great job with student privacy. It's one of the reasons that we love this company is because they do a good job um, protecting student data. So I'm click I acknowledge. And then they'll actually let me use the tools. So let's go in and use one of them. Let's maybe use one I haven't used before, book suggestions. So let's, what are your interests? Harry Potter. And I like the series, the Charlie Bone series, when I was younger. So I can generate, and here's some options it gave us. Um, Magic Treehouse, the Dragon Master. Um, maybe this is a lot of information for me, so a student can have it read aloud if they don't want to read through it. There's also some actions down here. Maybe I want to summarize this, or I want to shorten this shorter. So here's 50% of that. Can also create a summary in a sentence. It just gave me the titles. Um, I can do all of those things as a student right here. I can also speak the directions I want. Which book do you think is the best one out of what you recommended? Okay, and then I can hit enter. 
So it's like each suggested book has unique appeal. So maybe you want to say, give me pros and cons of each of these books. Okay, not to evaluate them. So you can see here the AI has limitations. Um, but really interesting, there's some book discussions. Um, then they can go back and they can select any of these other options. Maybe go into the AI literacy bot. How does AI learn? You can ask questions about AI. Okay, and maybe we want to translate this into Spanish. And it will translate that message into Spanish for us. I can also have it read aloud in Spanish. Gran pregunta. La IA aprende un poco como tú aprendes cosas. Okay. Um, it will also let you record in a native language, which I really like that students can interact. I can then say, can you translate this back to English? Okay. So you can get personalized supports inside of the AI tool. So these are what it looks like from the student perspective. I head back over here. So today we've looked at viewing teacher tools versus student tools, getting started with rooms for students, selecting tools, customizing tools, sharing the link and the student perspective. I also wanna add on one bonus as to what that looks like from the teacher back end from that student perspective. So here you can see I, Emma logged in. I can actually view the output. So there's some things there. You can see it's translating. I can hide that. I can look at activities. You can see everything I've done there. Um, I also can do things with this room, like I can choose to lock the room. So I can do that either from the actions menu here or up here. So I can say lock room. And you'll notice here on my tab it changed to locked and now it looks like this. So you can actually pause those rooms um, and lock them for your students. I can resume it. It'll let it right back open so my students can jump right back in can also pause a room. So you can see here your teacher has paused your room. You can still see the screen, but you can't interact with the AI tools right now. So um, gives them away. I can say resume. And I'll actually lock this room. And then back on my home screen menu, you can see here that that room is now locked. I had one person in it. And it will show all of that information for you. And it'll also show your role with the creator versus here I am on this one, a co-teacher. So you can see those. Um, I can also search rooms, so I can say student room. I can say, like, I think I called it an example, so I can search for that. So if you had a class period, you could search for it that way. Um, it also has things inside of that room. It has a moderation panel, so if students have issues um, or there's things that are concerning, it will try to moderate those and flag them for you. Wonderful. So we walked through a lot of things today, the viewing teacher tools versus student tools, um, and then all of these things here on the list, as well as a bonus of looking at um, what that looks like from the teacher end. As far as using it with your students, I would also recommend that you're using it age appropriately. Um, our little learners in K2 probably aren't using AI from the student end, um, but our upper grade levels and especially our secondary are going to be interacting with this tool. So why don't you just take a second and think about what is something you learned today that you can take back to your classroom and commit to implementing. So just take about 15 seconds to think about that. Okay, wonderful. So we learned about how to use Magic School AI with students so that you can support personalized student learning. Um, we defined AI, we defined Magic School, we logged in, and then we created and customized that student room, including learning how to share and seeing it from the back end, so lots of great things there. Also, there are some additional resources that you can look at. So we have Magic Student Supports here. Um, if you want to learn more about Magic School Student, there they are. There's a video about it. There's how to customize tools. There's lots of resources in an FAQ section. Additionally, Magic School has use cases for teachers, so you can come down to resources, use cases, There's lots of different use cases depending on who you are and what tools um, and their recommendations. Additionally, we have the AI website. There you go, just took a second to load. Um, so we have here tools that we have as well as supports in Canyon School District. So. Um, we can use the view, which is our guidebook, as well as professional learning. 
So additionally, we have a team. Um, our information is there. We would be happily support you with whatever you need um, when it comes to AI. So you can contact us there. I just appreciate you watching. I'd love to answer the questions that you have, um, whether that's working with you one-on-one -on -one or helping your PLC have a training or whatever I can do to help support you in AI use. Um, my name is Emma Moss. You can email me at emma.moss at canyonsdistrict.org. I also absolutely love your feedback. So bit.ly slash feedback for Emma. So the number four, that's not quite coming up, um, but bit.ly slash feedback for Emma linked in the slides. And I would love to know what you think. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.